Hey guys, it's Jameson Beats from Elevate Studios and welcome to episode 3 of my 3 part series on getting great sounding drums in FL Studio. In this episode we're going to be looking at tracking out the drums to the mixer and also we're going to look at simulating drum room and drum overhead mic signals. Alright, so let's get into the practice of it. Drum room mics for those who don't know are just mics placed in corners and far from the drum in a studio that would capture the ambience of the room or the sound of the room, the reflections in the room and the reverb and that kind of thing. And then the drum overheads are mics placed above the entire set. Sometimes you can use one mic or most times they use two or even more mics. Those mics, they record the drum as a whole. So they will, they will get a full picture of the drum as everything relates to each other. They will get everything a little bit more mashed than having the close mics and then putting it together and they will also get a lot more transient from the drums and they will also capture some of the ambience of the room because they are a bit further from the drums all right so those two things when you add them to the close mics that we have so far they will improve the sound of the drums a bit okay so let's see how we'll do that if we open up fpc on any pad you click you're going to see out here in this corner output right now the kick is set to these three lines which means in fl the default output or the master output and the master output here means the master output of the plugin not necessarily the master output in the mixer so that means the kick is set to the master output of the plugin then we have the snare is set to output one which is the output after the master output of the plugin and then we have hi-hats set to the next output then we have cymbals set to the next and then the toms set to the last output so if i send this to channel one then my kick is going to be on channel one, my snare is going to be on channel two, my hats are going to be on channel three, my cymbals are going to be on four and my toms. So what I'm going to do now is name those channels. Then I'm going to name the next three channels drum room, drum overheads and drum bus. Okay. So we have all our channels named. What I'm going to do now is group those channels. Come on. Um, leave the group name as the first channel because if you change that, it will change the name of the first channel. I'm going to name them. And then I put that color. What I'm going to do now is I want all of these to pass through the drum bus to get to the master. So I'm going to take them off on the master. Then I'm going to reroute them to the last three channels. Also, these two, I want them routed to the drum bus. I don't want them routed to the master. When it comes to the drum room and the drum overheads, I don't want any signal going straight to the channel. I'm going to send the signal through, but I'm not going to send it through this routing right here. Okay, so I have set up my sends, but I'm not going to use the sends that simply. So make sure for each of those channels, you have them routed straight to the drum bus, but you have them route to the room and the overhead without any signal going through, all right? Then we're going to use something called a send. And we're going to send the signal through using that. The reason is if I add any effects afterwards, after that send, it doesn't affect what is going to the drum room and the drum overhead. I'm going to select where it's sent to drum room. Then I'm going to copy that to snare so that's the signal going to the drum room and the nice thing about using the sense also is if i solo the drum room and none of these are playing 
the drum room will still get signal because it's not dependent on the signal after the fader, it's dependent on the signal way before the fader, all right? All right, so my drum room has signal and I'm going to edit my drum room now. What I want to do firstly is because the mics are going to be so far away from the drums, they don't catch so much of the dynamics of the drums. So I'm going to mimic that by using a compressor. Um, this is one of my favorite compressors. If you don't have it, you can use the FL compressor. What really matters is that you're going to want a fast attack. You're going to want, uh, let's say 400 milliseconds of release and then our threshold i can just go ahead now and bring that all the way down my ratio i want it as high as it can go um actually fl limiter has a compressor that can go up to 20 to 1 for the ratio on the compressor so that would crush it a lot more than this So if you look on the gain reduction meter, the gain reduction was all the way, the compression was all the way up, right? So I'm going to put some makeup gain. It doesn't sound great. It sounds pretty terrible actually, because what is happening is, all the transients, all the dynamics, we're just crushing everything and killing it and making it super flat. Those are room mics. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the sound of a room to them. We'll do that by using a reverb. Okay, so I know that I want a room, a small room. Actually, I'm going to load a plugin that is a drum room. And my decay time is already 0 0.6. I do not want the direct sound to pass through. So I'm going to, if you just turn it off, that's enough. But in some cases, you don't have a direct button. So you bring it all the way down. My early reflections and my reverb, those are fine. And here's what it sounds like. Alright, that does sound like you're in a room where drums are being played, but you standing in a corner, just facing the wall, listening to what bouncing off the wall. No. Let's hear what that sounds like when we blend it in with the rest of the drums, with the live drums. You heard that? Alright, let's listen to it. We're going to AB it. So I'm going to turn it off and turn it on and listen well. It's very similar to just adding reverb, but it's more than that. It adds thickness for one, and the reverb is a lot more subtle and less hollow. Okay, so that is one of the good things of doing it this way instead of just slapping a reverb on your drums. It gives it more feeling. Also, what I would want to do is I would probably EQ this to mimic whatever room I want. So some rooms are more live, some rooms are more dark. So in this case, I want a live room. So I'm going to use Fab Filter Pro. So in this case, I wanted a live room. So I'm adding some heights. 12K should be fine. I'm going to remove some of the low lows. So I don't want anything like 60, 70 hertz and below. So that's it, we have the drum room. The next one we're going to do is a drum overhead simulator. So we're going to make another send. Now for the drum overheads, we have to pay attention to pan and the volume going into the send. So we're going to send the drum overheads. For the kick, I'm going to put the volume somewhere lower and the pan, I'm going to leave it in the center. So that means 
my two overhead mics, which I'm mimicking, they're going to be set in phase with my kick. I'm going to set them in phase with my kick and with my snare. So that means the kick and snare are going to be set dead center because those two mics are in phase with the kick and the snare. All right, so that's it for the kick. Copy that to the snare. The snare will be a little louder in the overhead mics than the kick will be. So I'm going to put the snare up. The snare might actually be sometimes the loudest thing in your overhead mics, believe it or not. Because the snare most of the times is the loudest thing on the drums. So the overhead mics tend to pick up the snare as the loudest thing. The higher two will be a little lower than the kick in the than the snare in the overhead mics, even though they are closer, but the snare is so much louder than the hi hats that the mics pick them up more. Then we're going to go to the toms. Sorry, the cymbals. One thing about the hats, because they are usually left of the drum set, you either pan them left or right, depending on the perspective you want. So I want drummer's perspective. That means I want the people listening to the music to hear the drums as the drummer would. So I'm panning the hi-hats to the left. The cymbals, um, they will be a little louder than the hi-hats because the cymbals are usually very close to your overhead mics. And the pan, I would set it depending on the cymbals, but I will just pan both of my cymbals inside here. So I'll pan this one, and I'll pan this one. All right, so I'll them set to different sides. Okay, so that's our cymbals. And now we're going to do our toms. For the toms, I'm leaving my pan in the center also, and I'll pan it in the so I'll pan this one a little to the right. All right, so because I have four toms, I'm going to put one a little to the left of the snare, um, one just a little to the right of the snare, another one further right, and then my floor tom will be almost all the way to the right. All of them are routed to the drum overhead mic now. Let's listen to the drum overhead mic. All right, so, so far it sounds exactly like the drums, but we have a different balance. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an EQ. I like Fab Filter Pro, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to take out some low end. The reason being because of where the overhead mics are, not much of the low end reaches up to the overhead mics. The overhead mics usually are condensers, so they pick up a lot of heights and they are close to the hats and they are close to the cymbals. And for some reason, they tend to get the snare as very thick. So about 400, we're going to add a boost. All right, so about 300 sounds better to me. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to make it seem like it's a little bit further from, from the snare, but far enough that it can capture dynamics, we're going to add a compressor. And what will happen is because of the distance from the, 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 the set, then you're going to capture a lot of the transient. So the heat itself, you will hear it, but then the delay, you cannot catch it so much. So if you have the close mics will capture the transient and they will capture the delay or they will capture the resonance of the drum. But the overhead mics mostly capture the transient and we want to mimic that. So we're going to have a slow attack this time. Fast release. Ratio of four to one is fine.
All right, so we get a little more transient coming through. You can hear like the tack of the kick um, coming through a little more. You can hear from the snare, the, the initial heat of the snare is a bit more present in that when I put the compressor. All right, and it's not a big change. I mean, you wouldn't hear such a big change from the mics, so we don't want to make such a drastic change even in that. The next thing we would do is we would add some saturation, saturation all right i'm going to use fl wave shaper that is something you should have i actually prefer to use the saturation knob but just to make sure people understand you can use something like fl wave sh wave shaper to create some saturation All right, so what that does is it blends everything together a little bit. And the last thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add some room, some ambience, some reverb. I'm going to use the same reverb I had, with the same settings I had. This time I'm going to make the decay time a little bit longer. This time we're going to allow our direct to come through and our reverb, we'll put it to about 20 some percent. Oh, for the reflections. All right, you might be saying, but we already have the drum room. Why do we need to add reverb to the overheads? Because the overheads are far from the mics. It doesn't pick up the mic as cleanly as close mics. It picks up also some of the room with that. So we're going to blend it in now. Right. you can probably feel that more than you can hear that it adds a bit of thickness to the drums and that's what we really wanted all right guys so that's it now we have our simulated drum room we have our simulated drum overheads i have just one more bonus thing we're going to use the drum bus to edit the drums before we even mix anywhere. And I'm not going to mix today, I'm just going to show you that you can edit on your drum bus and add a lot of flavor to your drums before you even mix anything else. So for instance, if we add, I can. Oh, and that's another important reason why we use the sense because I can bring the hi-hats down without affecting how it goes to the sense, the signal it sends to the sense. If I want more punch in my drums, I can go again with a slow compressor. My ratio 4 to 1, I want fast release. And you would fine tune that, you would get that to sound as you want. 
and you can get a really nice live sounding drums just doing that. All right, before we finish, I just want to show you what that sounds like in the context of a song. Okay guys, so here's what um, the drums we were working on would sound um, in context of a song. Um, this is a booyah beat that I'm working on right now. Okay guys, so I hope this video series gave you some idea of the things that you can do to get studio type live sounding drums in FL Studio. Um, if you have the sense for it and if you have the understanding of it, you can get better sound than I got in this video. And if you have stuff like Addictive Drums or even Easy Drummer, then you can get even better sound because they have a wider base of sounds that you can choose from and higher quality sounds than we have in FPC. All right, you just have to learn how to route them. Um, it's not that complicated. Maybe I'll make a video on routing audio from Easy Drummer and Addictive Drums. But for now, if you're using FPC, you should get really good results with that. Okay, guys, that's it for the free part series. I hope that it was helpful to you and now you can get great live sounding drums in FL Studio as well. Um, if it was, please like, please share, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can know when we have new videos up and I'll see you next time.